Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, November 19th, 2021. I am Freddy Libert. The Ministry of Health and Agenda Affairs is always enthused to lead local celebrations in support of the men on Nevis. So noted the Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams when she delivered an address to mark the observance of International Men's Day. International Men's Day is celebrated annually on November 19th to acknowledge the cultural, economic, political and social contributions of men to their communities. At this time each year, we pause to celebrate the men of Nevis on a day dedicated to them. We are extremely fortunate in our blessed island of Nevis to have men who stand as pillars in their communities and treasures of our nation. They have gone above the call of duty, exemplifying the theme of Men's Day 2021, and they have done so through the arts, sports and fitness, volunteerism, spiritual guidance, philanthropy, community involvement, among other areas. I want to congratulate these men, a number of whom we will be formally recognized at our awards ceremony on November 30th for their sterling, selfless and salient contributions. With the focus on this year's theme, Better Relations Between Men and Women, the Department of Gender Affairs is hosting a number of events throughout the month of November. These began with a church service on Sunday, November 14th. On Tuesday, November 16th, we launched the Boys Mentorship Program with a training session for mentors. On November 25th, the department will host its Better Relations Seminar for men and women to deal with the socially significant topic of gender-based violence. On Saturday, November 27th, we look forward to partnering with the Department of Agriculture for this year's edition of Men Can Cook, the Grill Master Competition. We are happy to announce that the champion of Men Can Cook this year will win a trip to represent our island in Florida in 2022. I invite you, the general public, to join us in celebrating the men of Nevis throughout the month of November. They are fathers, uncles, brothers, cousins, and friends. Many go unnoticed. We therefore salute our men who stand as giants year after year, out supporting their families, communities, and the country. I commend you. We commend you. Happy International Men's Day 2021. A groundbreaking ceremony was held for the Bayview Gardens Housing Development in Rice's Gingerland. Potential homeowner Chelsea Maynard expressed her gratitude to the Nevis Island Administration and the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation for granting her the opportunity. I was shocked, nervous, and the one feeling I had was joy. It was just joy. For the opportunity that they're giving to me, the Nevis Island Administration and Gemma Housing. I am overjoyed over the moon. Thank you is just the word I have to use today for this opportunity that they are blessing me. Minister with Responsibility for Lands and Housing, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, briefly spoke on the detail of the housing development. So we have eight lots that will uh, be constructed upon here at uh, Bayview Gardens. And the lot sizes would range from 5,535 square feet to as much as 7,260 square feet. He also spoke of the plan behind the simultaneous groundbreakings over the past months. So we are having these groundbreaking ceremonies so that we can move towards the construction phase in short order. And in, in that regard, we can move towards the handing over and then the homeowner occupying their home in short order in terms of a few months. Next year, we'll go straight ahead into full-blown construction. The groundbreaking ceremony for Bayview Gardens development is the fourth housing development to take place in four months. 
also present at the ceremony were area representative for the St. George's Parish, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, Senior Minister in the Nevis Island Administration, the Honorable Spencer Brand, members of the NIA's cabinet, staff of the Nevis Housing and Land Development Corporation, and other invited guests. St. Kitts and Nevis has taken a balanced approach to reviving its economy. That is according to Chair of the National COVID-19 Task Force, Abdia Samuel, who says they are committed to working with stakeholders in the tourism sector. The tourism sector is beginning to show good signs of uh, reviving, whether it be the cruise passengers, as we are seeing two, three uh, ships on a regular basis now. Uh, docking at our ports, I mean at Port Zante, and also at the, Caram uh, the South Friars Bay. Equally so, today our sister island, Nevis, would have also uh, seen a ship, a small cruise ship, with approximately 530 passengers there about, also docking at the Charleston, in the Charleston area. But one of the things in coming back to the cruise ship that I want to say to you, the general public, is that even though we had three cruise ships yesterday, and from the numbers shared by Tourism Authority, uh, the num uh, we had approximately 5,000 persons yesterday. But what was also uh, significant for me when I was, uh, I was speaking with the CEO of Tourism is that those three ships should have had approximately 10,000 plus um, passengers uh, together combined on the ground but the ships are operating at a 40 to 50 percent capacity. So it means that the jobs that you may have gotten in the past are also reduced to maybe to approximately a 50 percent chance as well. So I just want us again, that's why I said understanding, co collaboration, the sharing of information in criti is critical in solving a lot of the challenges and concerns being raised by uh, service providers in the tourism sector. St. Kitts and Nevis is implementing a gradual process to getting persons in the tourism sector back to work, Samuel explained at the Wednesday, November 17th COVID-19 press briefing. So we have recently approved the operations of the hair braiders and the ala rub operators, etc. Our understanding is that the tourism authority is doing the best to somewhat guide and have organized um, uh, details of how persons are going to uh, access or be able to provide these services in certain tourist attractions. The National COVID-19 Task Force is also looking at how best to manage a larger number of tourists entering the Federation. The National COVID-19 Task Force also met with the hoteliers and St. Kitts and Nevis and I must say it's one of the most fruitful meetings that we would have hosted and convened with the hoteliers both on St. Kitts and Nevis and a number of recommendations were shared by the hoteliers and you would have listened to the presentation made by the CMO where all we are asking for is a collaborative approach for us to be able to continue with the resiliency and the roadmap to economic recovery. Some of the hoteliers has indicated that the numbers are increasing in terms of the, the, the uptake in guest arrivals. Uh, so when they would have been expecting maybe 30, 40 percent, they have gone beyond the 50 percent. Chair of the National COVID-19 Task Force, Abdias Samuel. Still to come, Nevis features in National Geographic Traveller UK edition in December. The details right after this break. I will take the vaccine because being vaccinated is the best way to beat the pandemic. I will take the vaccine to protect my family, citizens, residents and all visitors to Nevis. I will take the vaccine to protect myself my loved ones, my clients, my co-workers, my community. For more information or to get vaccinated, visit your nearest health center. Welcome back. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, will host his next monthly press conference on Thursday, November 25th. The press conference will be held at the Cabinet Room on the second floor of the Social Security Building at Pinney's Estate. Premier Brantley will provide an update on matters pertaining to Nevis and members of the press will have the opportunity to ask questions. 
The press conference will be broadcast live from 10 a.m. on Nevis Television and TV, Channel 99, Nevis TV Online.com, NTV Go Up, Nevis Television Facebook page, and Nevis Newscast YouTube channel. The Nevis Tourism Authority, NTA, continues to attract strong international media coverage in key source markets to ensure that the island of Nevis continues to be on the radar when people are planning their long-haul vacations. In the most recent article, Nevis features among 14 other destinations in the National Geographic Traveller UK edition in December 2021. The article entitled The Caribbean Discover Cultures, Creatures and Cuisines on 14 of the region's most memorable islands is penned by award-winning travel writer and photographer Nigel Tisdall, who is based in London. In the segment on Nevis, the author focuses on the historic character, heritage hotels that are slowly vanishing elsewhere. He first illustrates Bath Hotel, its ballroom, Italian gardens, and thermal spa. Then he details the Hermitage, Montpellier Plantation and Beach, and Golden Rock Inn. Tisdall encourages readers to visit the island to climb Nevis Peak, take a stroll across Pinney's Beach, and enjoy liming with locals at the Friday evening barbecue. The National Geographic is known as the most widely read magazine of all time and has a UK print circulation of 48,653. It also receives 409,000 monthly users to its website. People look to this reputable and trustworthy travel magazine to inspire and inform their upcoming business or pleasure travel decisions. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Liburd. Thank you for viewing.